ارزونا 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 الحمد لله Welcome back to the undercover heavyweight champions of the world. Today's personality is Al Hafiz Al Kabir, Wal Imam Al Nahirir, Wa Shaykh Al Islam Wa Al Muslimin. Arguably, the most sophisticated science is the science of Hadith. A Hafiz in the terminology of scholars is not like what we use today as a Hafiz. This man was not just a Hafiz; he was a mega, super duper. Extra Cooper Hafiz Al Hafiz Al Kabir Alayhi Rahmat Rabbil Alameen. This is the person of Zainuddin Abu Al Faraj Abdul Rahman Ibn Shihab Ibn Ahmed, commonly known as Ibn Rajab Al Hambali Al Baghdadi. ثم الدمشقي. On the 15th of Rabi'in Al Awal, year 736. He was born. من أخلاقه أنه كان لا يخالط أحد ولا يتردد إلى أحد. Of his characteristics and his own behavior is that he did not use to socialize with people. He did not socialize with anyone, and he did not use to frequent anyone. Imam Ibn Rajab Al Hambali is the author of this book. The book Fathul Bari that you heard about that is the best book on the face of earth that explained the best book after Quran which is Sahih al-Bukhari written by Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani who took approximately 37 years compiling that book. That is the encyclopedia of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. The one who came with that title Fathul Bari and started that work is this man, this heavyweight champion, Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, rahimahullah, this great Imam, when he explains a hadith or when he explains a matter in fiqh, just go to sleep. Read it and just go to sleep because you get the dose that you need. Because the dosage that he will give you is beyond enough. At the end of Sha'ban or the very beginning of Ramadan, year 795 after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they saw this man walking in the street and that flabbergasted the mind of the people. Like, who? Where is he going? This is the man that we do not see him outside. This is the man who is not seen. He is not socializing. He is not going to anyone. He is not sitting with anyone. Always keeping his mouth closed. When he begins to write or teach or when he begins to send the message of Allah to mankind is when the man is seen. So today, where is he going? They saw him entering a cemetery. They're like, what's going on with this imam going to the graveside? He's going to the graveyard. According to Ibn Nasir al-Din al-Dimashq, rahimahullah, he said some of those who witnessed this man's death, they said when he entered the cemetery, he went to the funeral director and the one in charge of digging the grave, al-Imam al-Nihrir, he went and said to the person, if you don't mind, please dig a hole for me right here. Astonishingly, he asked, like, what's going on? He's like, please, if you don't mind, just go ahead and dig a grave. So he said, I dug the grave. He went inside the grave and then he laid down. He went all the way in into the dahd. When he came out, he wiped himself and he was like, Hada jayid, Hada jayid. This feels good and this looks good. The man who dug that grave, he said on the 4th of Ramadan, in the month of Ramadan, just like the month that we are in, he said on the 4th day of Ramadan, year 795 after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I saw people coming. They went straight to the hole that I dug a few days ago. And I was like, what's wrong with you all using that hole? I dug it for someone and they're like, who are you talking about? That was Ibn Rajab al Hanbal who ask me to open that hole what you doing with that hole they were like look this is imam ibn rajab al hanbali in his shroud we came to bury him now you tell me if he is not a heavyweight what else could he be
when he started explaining Sahih al-Bukhari, his Sahih al-Bukhari, his explanation of Sahih al-Bukhari is on a different level. When he started explaining Sahih al-Bukhari, he continued from the book Kitab al-Wahi all the way to Kitab al-Janaiz. When he reached the Kitab al-Janaiz, do you know what Kitab al-Janaiz is? That is the book that talks about funeral. That's when he dropped the book. He went to the grave. The place that he asked to be open was his own place. That was Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali. There's nothing that is sweeter than ikhlas, sincerity. He tested it. And that's our shahada and the shahada of ulama in him. And in closing, I say to my brothers and my sisters all around the world, know that the best time to be alive is this time that you are living. The time that is known as the last 10 days of Ramadan. Wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi. Besides the first 10 days of Dhil Hijjah, there is no better time to be alive than this time. So if you see yourself alive, thank Allah and be grateful and appreciative and make enough enough dua enough dua and the best dua to make allahumma innaka afuwun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anna if anything else that you would like to ask the best thing to add is to say allahumma inni as'aluka al-afwa wal afiyata wal mu'afat there is no dua besides the first one that is equivalent to this if you will make it Try your best to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't have to go to the Prophet's grave to make dua, that means there is no righteous person who is entitled, who has right for you to go to his grave to make dua. As we mentioned yesterday, the statement of Shamsuddin al-Zahabi rahimahullah, that making dua at any given moment, at any place, is accepted لعموم قوله تعالى وقال ربكم دعوني أستجب لكم because of the saying of Allah call upon me and I will respond to you if Allah promises to answer my dua right here why will I suffer myself to go to somebody else's grave why do I have to make a trip somewhere else why do I have to go somewhere else to make dua if Allah promises to answer dua ud'uni astajib lakum fali astajibu li wal yu'minu bi in baqara he said so respond to Allah and make dua and I will close with this respected audience and Muslims and Muslimat, wherever you are. The concept of you springing up when it's time to break fast is when you make dua. This concept is not fully accurate. It's one of the places to make dua when you are breaking your fast. There's no doubt about that. But to refrain from making dua until you are about to break your fast is not the teachings of the deen. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as Imam Ibn Majah and Imam Tirmidhi rahimahum Allah wa radiyallahu anhum reported that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said ثَلَاثَةُ لَا تُرَدُّ دَعْوَتُهُمْ There are three kinds of people, three categories of people whose dua will not be rejected, whose dua and supplications will not be rejected. The first of the three, الصَّائِمُ حَتَّى يُفْطِرْ The person who is fasting until he breaks his fast. The person fasting until she breaks her fast. So dear brothers and dear sisters, don't wait at any given moment. You just remember, we Ramadan make dua. You wake up, make dua. You go to sleep, make dua. This is the moment of dua. Slaves and servants of Allah, know that these days are the best days to be alive. So if you are alive, know that you are fortunate and fortunately blessed. Wassalamu alaikum. Khitam and wabtida. ارزنا حرزنا الحرز للمنا حرنا هو الحرنا هو